Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. In today's video guys we're gonna be talking about physics service and everything about it, how you use it and um you know creates different stuff like uh player collision. So let's get right into it. So physics service houses and contains everything that works with collision groups and defines whether certain things can collide with each other. Um you know like there's can collide on parts, but this um goes beyond that in scripts and like just has more power behind it and uses stuff like I've already said uh stuff with um uh, player collisions and creating deleting modifying collision relationships uh so it's just more powerful than just a regular can collide in Roblox Studio. So obviously to start out, you need the physics service, so you're getting the service physics service. Now, the next thing on my list is register collision group. What this means, register collision group, is that we are basically making the collision group. So when we say physics service, uh, register collision group, we're going to give it a name. Um, you can put the name in here, or you can also just make it a variable. Now, in my game, I have two two uh parts okay i have this red part i also have this green ball so this is called ball this is called part i'm going to use these two things so notice in the properties when i scroll down can collide and everything else is checked the collision is checked but we can also change this beyond that so in our register collision group we're going to make two collision groups called uh, part collision collision group I'm just gonna say and we're gonna copy this and this one will be ball collision group uh, group I think I spelled that right yeah now I'm gonna make another variable for the part in our workspace so game workspace dot parts local ball is equal to game not workspace dot ball all right so we have our two parts now we need okay so what we've done here is is we have made the collision groups. This is what it's saying. Register the collision group, and our collision group name is what we put in here. Uh, and I put in, I've registered or made two collision groups called part collision group and ball collision group. Now, what we need to do is add parts and stuff like that to these collision groups um, so that they can be used because we can't just assign a group without anything in it we need to assign parts to it to determine uh, if collision is enabled or not so let's do that now so that's why I got these two variables part and ball you're gonna go down and you're gonna say parts and there is a property or um, you know a thing down here that says collision group I uh, don't think you guys can see that but uh, when you select collision group there it is and you select collision group you set that equal to part collision group, okay? And same thing for the ball. Ball dot collision group will be equal to the ball collision group. So now we have assigned our parts to the part collision group. We have also assigned our ball to the ball collision group. Uh, so we've made everything. We've assigned all our parts. Now... The next thing we're going to do is actually make it so we can collide or not collide with these two collision groups. So physics service, collision uh, group set collidable. That takes the first collision group and the second collision group. So parts collision group as well. Ball collision group. And now the third argument is if it's collidable or not which is true or false true being you can collide with it false meaning you can't so i'm gonna put in false so i don't know if you guys see what i'm doing here but these two parts are both set to can collide true but using this statement we are using these two collision groups and we are making it so we are setting it to false so that these collision groups do not collide with each other because the main service, main reason for physics service is being able to have certain parts collide with other uh, parts and you know certain parts like I said before it just has more power whatever you guys want to do 
but right here you are setting getting the two collision groups and setting whether you want the parts in that group to collide or not so uh, if that makes any sense now if you just want more proof or just add something onto this I'm gonna say print physics service uh, um, there is a thing where you can get the collision state so collision groups are collidable uh, this returns the state of two uh, of two groups so again put in here part collision as well uh, ball collision group and that's all you need this will print the value which is either true or false uh, so let's test this out now so I have my red part above my ball these things are both anchored again can collide to set the true for both of these I'm going to click run so everything starts to run uh, in our game and what I'm going to do is set the red ball uh, anchor to false and when I do that you will see even though again one more time the collisions are set to true when I select this to not be anchored it falls right through the parts as we can see here um, it just goes right through the the ball whoops it goes right through oh <laughs> it's kind of glitching out but those are the the basics of the collision groups you can see it's colliding with or not it's kind of jittery but that's just because it's uh, the the weird shape of a ball but these things are not collidable using collision groups okay guys so a few years ago I was watching this guy's Chris Swagger's game development live stream and this just popped up in my head but he has this part in his uh, live stream where this pond this purple water um, he can go in the water but the balls here that he has in the lobby actually cannot go in the water um, this is using uh, physics service so if I play it uh, he he see he can go in the water but th when he moves the uh, the balls in the water he, they do not go in so that's really cool that's uh he used physics service to make that all right guys so now let's make the player collisions so in most games you'll see like in an obby and stuff like that that people will turn off collisions for roblox characters because um people can collide with each other and stuff like like obbies and it can bother people when they're trying to uh, you know do an obstacle course so how we would do this is keep your physics service I'm gonna get rid of all this and what I'm going to do is make a new collision group and I'm gonna call this characters right and I'm gonna say physics service collision group set collidable and I'm going to set characters to itself or right, I'm gonna set characters to characters and I'm gonna say false very simple but down here I'm gonna say local function uh, function assign collisions character but down here I'm gonna say game dot players dot player added connect function player and player dot character added connect uh, assign collisions just like that all right, so now I need to get every part in the character. So for underscore comma body parts, uh, body parts in character get children. Whoops, children. I'm gonna assign this as a character. Character. I don't think I can do that. Maybe it's just a model. Okay, never mind. But get children. Do if body part is a base part then body part dot collision collision group is equal to characters yeah there we go okay guys so i made um a server with two people in it right uh i have these two people walking around now when they touch each other you will see that they cannot collide with each other and usually without the collision groups you would be uh, colliding with the character so that is how you make
player collisions in your Roblox game. And yeah, guys, that was today's video. If you guys did learn something from this video, or you guys just enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and the subscribe button. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.